Hi guys, so today I'm coming to you with a top 10 Star Wars canon books. These are the books that are not part of Legends, so these are only canon books I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I'm also not including the novelization versions of films, so if it was a movie made about it, I'm not doing that. I'm only talking about the canon books not from Legends or EU. And also I'm going to be doing them, this is my opinion as the top 10, and one of the things that is obviously going to influence my opinion is from a gaming perspective. So uh, a book that might otherwise be terrible, I might give extra points to if it canonizes or introduces certain things that are very cool uh, that can basically apply to gaming, uh, i.e., for, for example, if a, if a book introduces or recanonizes a new ship that might show up in like X-Wing or Armada, it'll get bonus points for me for that. So that is one thing that will influence uh, my, my decisions here. So let's get started. At number 10, Lords of the Sith. So Lords of the Sith is actually a, a book that, uh, if you look at it, you might think it focuses just around uh, Vader and Palpatine, but it also has a lot to do with Cham Syndulla and the Free Ryloth movement. Um, it was a decent book for me. It has some very, very cool parts, but one of the things that, that kills it for me is that from the beginning of the book all the way through the end, like the entire purpose of this book is Cham Syndulla is trying to kill Vader and the Emperor. And it just... it it takes so much out of the story for me because you know that they you know that they don't succeed have you seen any of the movies you know vader and the emperor survive so so it's just but that part while that put a dark cloud over the book the whole book as itself was was fairly well written and and, and pretty enjoyable and there's some very very cool parts that uh that really talk about you know Vader and the Emperor and their fighting and their relationship. So uh, it definitely explores that very well, and so that's the strength of the book. Next is Tarkin. Now Tarkin is a book that obviously is pretty much all about Tarkin, but it also involves Vader as well, and it talks a little bit about their relationship. It also talks about some of the early construction with the Death Star. Um, I initially liked this book an awful lot, but one of the things that kind of made it rank a little lower for me is one of these inconsistencies we see with some of the writers um and it's not an actual inconsistency for me it's more of a perceived inconsistency see i read tarkin much later i read tarkin in preparation for rogue one uh and i, I read catalyst not long after that and it was funny to me how the Tarkin book makes it seem like Tarkin was the person in charge of the Death Star all along, where then in Catalyst it makes it seem like Krennic is the person in charge of the Death Star all along. And then the movie kind of does its best to clarify, oh, well, well, they kind of both were from a certain point of view, but that sort of thing annoys me. Uh, it annoys me in the same way that the prequels and the, and, the, and the original trilogy have their things that annoy me and that... You know, Obi-Wan's like, well, when I met him, I was amazed at what a great pilot he was. However, you know, I took it upon myself to train him. You know, like, no, it's not really kind of how it went. I mean, there's a certain point of view there, but it's not really how it went. It certainly, it certainly paints a picture that they, that the other book, you know, the other stuff did not live up to. So there's that. Um, but Tarkin, all in all, it was a good story about Tarkin. It got it, he's because he's so much of a bigger character than you see on screen in Episode Four. So if you want to appreciate his gravity in Rogue One, I think it helps for that. It also introduces a very cool ship called the Carrion Spike, which I'm hoping comes to Armada, could possibly even come to X-wing because it's a Corvette-sized ship. So uh, very cool stuff uh, in that book. Next is Ahsoka. Ahsoka was a very well written book. Uh, I I just had a few small problems with it, but on the whole, it's a good read. It's enjoyable, and one of the best parts about this is I do a lot of my books on Audible, and this one was read by Ashley Eckstein. So it's amazing having you know the voice of Ahsoka read Ahsoka. So I I really enjoyed that much of it. It also talks a little bit about um, lightsabers and how the you know the Sith. Uh, lightsabers are red or the dark side lightsabers are red so that part is kind of interesting it tells you a little bit about what happened with her in between the Clone Wars and Rebels so uh, if you're a big Ahsoka fan I think you'll like the book um, my only real gripes were there are certain characters in the book that I think you were supposed to care more about that I just didn't care that much about and so I think there was a slight disconnect there with some of the characters um, certain parts of the book kind of dragged on for me 
but uh, I was willing to forgive that because it had so many good things going for it. Number seven is Empire's End. Empire's End is the third and final book of the uh, Aftermath trilogy, and Empire's End has some really great scenes. It's actually, it, it inspired a lot of my conspiracy theories as well because it kind of sets up you know, what happens after Return of the Jedi and moving forward into The Force Awakens in a pretty cool way. Uh, but there was also some kind of things in it that didn't make that much sense to me. I don't want to go into too many spoiler things, but there were some parts of it I was a little underwhelmed, but there were also a lot of really cool things that I liked. I especially liked the way they handled the Battle of Jakku uh, and, and the the Super Star Destroyer coming down that you see in The Force Awakens uh, and, and that whole battle. Uh, I know some people have different opinions there, but I'm a fan of the way it was written, especially as it might apply to ship-based games. So I, I really kind of liked that part. But all in all, it was good and, uh, and, and, and it set some pretty interesting things up. And also they name drop Thrawn. Uh, he's not in the book, but they name drop, name drop him. And this book came out before Thrawn had, uh, the Thrawn book had come out. So it was really, as a big Thrawn fan myself, it was really exciting to see, to see Thrawn uh, being mentioned. And that's always a plus for me. Um, next up is Life Debt. And now Life Debt is actually the second book in the Aftermath trilogy. Um, one of the reasons that this one ranks higher is because Life Debt actually, for one, it was it was written better. It was a breath of fresh air uh, to an extent. You see, the first Aftermath book was one of the worst books I've ever read in my entire life. Um, and so, but I muscled through it because it was Star Wars. Uh, and also, I mean, it was important. It introduced a lot of characters, but Life Debt now was able to, I was able to get some payoff for the sacrifice of reading Aftermath. Life Debt, it started to get good. It started to get better. Like you, now that you already went through a whole book with some of these characters, now things happen with these characters, and now I care about them just a little bit more because I went through this entire you know week of trying to power through this terrible book. And uh, Life Dead also fixes a lot of things. It introduced more characters that we're already familiar with, like Han and Leia and Chewbacca, and 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 that much is very cool. And it also life debt re, you know introduced and recanonized some very important things like the super star destroyer eclipse uh, which i was very very happy to see officially mentioned and uh you know again gaming maybe we'll see it uh, so life debt was was good next up new dawn now new dawn i actually was not expecting to like as much as I did, so it was a it was a pleasant surprise. Uh, but I really like Rebels, and I, that's one of the things that ranks this higher. Uh, I'm a big fan of Kanan and Hera. Uh, Hera is one of my favorite characters, period. And I just I think Kanan's very well written, and it's a great look at their early days. It paints a little bit of backstory for Kanan and kind of. I just I just really like the way it's written. It's a good, enjoyable adventure. It's fairly predictable, so it's not like anything major, but it's an easy read. It's a good listen because I listen to it on audio, uh, Audible rather. And uh, I'm and all, most of these books are narrated by Mark Thompson, by the way, who is a phenomenal voice actor. He does such a good job reading these books. So that just makes any book he reads is going to be ten times better if you're here if you're listening to him on Audible or any other other audiobook source. So, um, but he does the voices very well. It has it didn't have the best villain, but also in, you know introduces Ray Sloan, who is throughout a lot of the books, including the Aftermath trilogy. Ray Sloan's kind of a big deal, and so I really liked that as well. But it's just a good fun adventure where Kanan meets Hera and they start their you know their careers together so that part is very cool I, and it is just it's just good it's just solid nothing major there just overall solid at number four bloodline now this is a book all about leia for the most part there are some things i really liked about it and then i had kind of one gripe but it wasn't a terrible gripe um i'm gonna start about talking about the gripe first and then i'll get into the good things my one gripe is that it kind of paints a picture for the origins of the First Order that don't really match up to what other authors are saying about the origins of the First Order. Now, there's a way to explain it, but at the first, when I read this at first, I was thinking, oh, well, they're trying to say that so-and-so found, founded the First Order, and th then other books directly contradict that. And so now you can go back, and if you read it now, you can be like, oh, no, no, they're not saying that this person founded the First Order. They're just saying they were involved with the First Order, and, and I understand that now, but 
at the time, I feel like it was painting a picture uh, because we knew so little about the First Order when this book was first released that I felt it was trying to paint a picture that just didn't end up coming to fruition. But uh, I understand now and it's, and it's cool. So I was a little confused. Maybe it was just on me. Maybe some people out there share my uh, feelings about Bloodline. But all in all, it's uh, it's a very good book. You are invested in the characters. You're invested in Leia already. Uh, it does talk about some other characters. We get to see some other people make little guest appearances, and it's narrated by Mark Thompson, so it's just amazing on Audible. Uh, so that's Bloodline. At number three, Dark Disciple. Dark Disciple was a complete surprise for me. Blown away by this book. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I didn't expect it to be. I did not expect it to be at all. I actually read this book much later than I, uh, out of the order, but um, I, I absolutely loved it. This book actually had me shed multiple tears, and I don't do that too often with books. So uh, I, I'm very, very, I don't wanna go into too much about spoilers for this book, um, other than just to say, it's extremely well written. It's extremely well voice acted, if you hear it on audio, uh, audiobook, and it makes you care so much about these characters. I, I, um, I can't say enough good things about this book. So Dark Disciple at number three. Number two is Lost Stars. Lost Stars, you've probably already heard about this book, hailed as the greatest Star Wars book of all time. Yeah, it pretty much is. It's a classic story and it's put through the eyes of people on both sides of the war and it lets you relive certain events from a whole new perspective. Completely phenomenally good. This book is flawless absolutely flawless if you even are not a star wars fan get this book you will absolutely love it and that's all i'm going to say about it it's so good and the number one book is thrawn now you may disagree with me and put thrawn slightly lower but i'm a big thrawn fan like i already said and i'm just completely blown away by this timothy zahn already back in full force this guy is like one of the best authors on the planet he writes thrawn so well it makes you fall in love. You feel like you're rooting for the Empire when you when you, when you read Thrawn. Uh, it also has a character named Eli Vanto, which is kind of like the Watson to Sherlock Holmes, uh, or if Thrawn was Sherlock Holmes, and it, and their relationship allows allows the story to frame Thrawn in such an interesting way. It's amazing. There are parts of the book where Thrawn is kind of telling you what he's thinking and then there's other parts where he is reading somebody and it it feels a little bit like a Sherlock Holmes story in some ways but in other ways it's just um, it's just so well written that you are reading this and you, I didn't even care if there was a climax or some kind of aha moment to the story because every chapter was pure gold most stories have to kind of build up to a big payoff the payoff started on the very first page every single line of this the only bad thing i can say about it is that there were certain and this isn't even a bad thing but if i had to um arinda price is also in this or governor price from star wars rebels and the chapters with her don't have thrawn in them so therefore they're not quite as good but still that kind of makes it even much more of a payoff when you get back to the thrawn chapters and thrawn is probably like 75 percent of the book there's a little bit about price as well Maybe my ratio is slightly off, but it's amazing. So I think you're gonna love the uh, the Thrawn book, and and again, it's very close. Like the top three are all kind of close, but especially Lost Stars and Thrawn are are kind of right there. So this has been my top ten books. Uh, let me know if you disagree. What would you, or did I leave something out completely off the list that you think should be on there, or what should be higher? Let me know. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and click the little bell for alerts. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.